Hi, everybody. I'm Greg, senior pastor here at Park Avenue Church in Minneapolis. Thank you for connecting with us in worship. If you're a newcomer to Park, I want to extend a special welcome to you, let you know that you matter to us, and we're so grateful, so glad that you're here. And if you'd like more information about Park, just drop us a line at info at parkabchurch.org. We'd love to connect with you. And I say this every week, but we want to include as many people as we can in the goodness that is Park Avenue Church. So if you're participating with us on Facebook or YouTube, I wonder if you take just a second to click the share button in your Facebook or YouTube app to invite other folks that you know to participate. Now, a couple of things I'm really excited to tell you about. First, I wonder if you'll meet me today following this service in the gathering room um, for a time to greet one another and meet new friends. We'll, we'll, send, uh, we'll, we'll send you a link. So all you got to do is send an email to us saying something like, let me in to info at parkhabchurch.org, and then you'll receive a link back from us promptly. And you just got to click that link and join about 10 after 1. Secondly, I know how important giving is to us. So in this long season of not being able to worship together in our sanctuary, we're trying to make it easier for all of us to make an offering, to give. And one of the easiest ways is to text your gift amount to Park's new text-to-give phone number, 888-318-8032. Just open the text app on your phone, type in 888 888- 318-8032, and then in the text field, enter the amount you want to give as a whole number, no decimals or dollar sign, and then press send. For example, if you want to give 20 bucks, thank you, enter your gift as 20, not 20.00 or dollar t- sign 20, and then you press send and you'll receive a link to complete your offering securely. I've used it myself. It works great. So thank you for your faithfulness, and thank you for being here today to worship with Park Online. I hope to see you in the virtual gathering room immediately following our service from about 1.10 to 1.30. And now, here's Darrell Williams with our call to worship. Darrell? Thank you for that, Pastor Greg. Good morning, Park Avenue. This is Darrell Williams, the youth director here. This next segment will lead us into our call to worship Uh, It is a song that was written uh, by me and collaborated with uh, Rachel Okerlund, uh, such an amazing uh, voice and just a wonderful woman of God. Uh, We put together a visual for you to to watch uh, and also a song uh, to listen to. Uh, The song derives from uh, James 5.16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. We believe that prayer is the key to um, to unlocking the things that keep us bound and unlocking our healing, unlocking what God has for us, and also just begin beginning or becoming closer to God uh, through the expression of prayer and the activation of faith in prayer. So the name of the song is called Prayer. So God bless you, and we pray you enjoy it. 
the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. Yeah. Dear Lord, it's me. I want to see again. I'm blind and I'm broken. No peace within. I'm sick and I'm lonely. I could use a friend. I'm for real. I fell. Never been pretend. I can't express and I can't explain this anxiety. I know the truth and I know your word is inside of me. I keep repeating these same mistakes. It's insanity. I need your grace and I need your love like a canopy. Pray up in the morning Me and you, that's how this greatness started Who would've known I came up from the closet, yeah Not sure what I did, but it feels wrong, yeah And some Christians say they love you with the same tongue, they Tuck you down to the ground, don't lose your faith Yeah, I know, sometimes it don't go your way And that's okay, yeah, that's okay Talk to God on the real, he got the final say Lord, we need you more than ever, here and now, until forever, until forever, yeah. Everything I need, I know you got it. This is how I pray up in the morning. Me and you, that's how this greatness started. Who would have known I came up from the closet, yeah. Everything I need, I know you got it. This is how I pray up in the morning. Me and you, that's how this greatness started. I pray up in the morning Me and you, that's how this greatness started Who would've known I came up from the closet, yeah I've been in it for a minute, but you came through Every sin, how to sin it, but your love's true And that's the proof, that's the proof That's the difference between me and you I would not have died and rose again in days I would not have taken death from the grave I would not have shed my blood for all to be This is why I praise the Lord, the King of Kings Everything I need, I know you got it This is how I pray up in the morning Me and you, that's how this greatness started Who would have known I came up from the closet, yeah Everything I need, I know you got it This is how I pray up in the morning Me and you, that's how this greatness started Darrell and Rachel sing about prayer. There also are many prayers about singing. Psalm 104 says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. The psalm writer praises God not because life is painless and perfect, but because God is faithful in the midst of life's struggles and imperfections. Greetings, beloved. I don't know what kind of week you have had, whether it has been filled with joy or sorrow, celebration or suffering. Whatever season you are in, we have come to the time in worship that we set aside each week for intercessory prayer. I invite you to bring your burdens and blessings before the Lord. The Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Eternal God, we stand, kneel, sit, and run before you because you are good. You alone are worthy of our praise. We give praise to your holy names. You are Jehovah Rapha, Lord God who heals. You are Jehovah Shalom, Lord God who is our peace. You are Jehovah Sidkenu, Lord God who is our righteousness. And you are Jehovah Nisi, 
our victory banner. Lord, we lift up and praise your holy names, Lord, because you are worthy, not because of what you have done for us, but because of who you are, Lord. Because of who we are, Lord, we are sinful beings, Lord. We also lift up to you our confession. Your word says that if we confess our sins, he who is righteous and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so now, Lord, we lift up to you silently those areas of our lives where we have fallen short. Lord, we continue now in prayer, even as we silently continue our confessions of sin, Lord. We lift up to you the burdens of our hearts, Lord. We begin, Lord, with asking that you would comfort those who are grieving. There's loss in this community here at Park Avenue Church, but in this city and this state and in this world, Lord, we lift up to you every grieving heart, every grieving family. We lift up to you those who are mourning and ask that you would provide a balm of comfort. Use us as your hands and feet to show compassion and mercy and care to those who so desperately need it in this time. We lift up to you those who are suffering financially, Lord. This COVID-19 pandemic has not only been a challenge to our health, Lord, and to our ability to socialize, but also financially. So many have lost their jobs, have had their work reduced, and even this past week, their unemployment cut off, Lord. And so, Father, we ask that you would do what only you can do, which is to make a way out of no way, Lord. Be our provision and our provider, Lord. We lift up to you. Also those in our community, Lord, who just need healing in their bodies, Lord, be our healer, Lord. Just touch them and comfort them, Lord. Give them hope, Lord, of your ever-present power and your desire for our well-being, Lord. We just lift up all of these things, all of these burdens, but also all of our praise and wrap it up in the prayer that you taught the disciples to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen forever and ever. Amen. Hello, Park Avenue. It's time now to worship God through our giving. But first, let's lift our voices together and sing. Romans chapter 12 verse 13 says, Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And during this time of social distancing, you can do just that by giving on our website, parkavchurch.org slash give. Thank you and be blessed. Hey folks, the scripture today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, 
Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they climbed in the boat together, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The, the Word of God, God for, for the, the people, people of God. God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you about a crazy story? Some years ago, I traveled to Peru as part of a team tasked with uh, teaching local pastors and church leaders. And so we spent several days high in the Andes Mountains in this beautiful town called Huancayo. Uh, during the bus ride back across the Andes to Lima, where we we're going to catch a plane on this narrow stretch of road, at that time, the highest navigable, easy for me to say, route in the world, we encountered a blizzard at 16,000 feet, not something we're prepared for. So seemingly out of nowhere, it descended like this wall of white as the sun was beginning to set, and it came in fast. The temperature did a deep dive from about, I don't know, 50 degrees to below freezing, howling winds swept through the steep and jagged peaks of the Andes, snow piled up all around us to the point where the bus could no longer move on this icy road. And outside the window, you could see other vehicles stranded on the side, a few with their doors left open like they were abandoned quickly for fear of sliding over the cliff. And after a time of sitting stuck in the snow on the road, the bus driver took his microphone and in Spanish instructed the men to get off the bus and go around to the rear and push. Uh, he was going to try to get the bus moving. The snow was... It was above our ankles as we hugged this sort of icy mountainside to get to the back. We did the best we could to find our footing, to push as the driver pressed the gas. And all of a sudden, when the bus started moving, about 15 men in our group ran ahead to the front to jump on. And before a couple of friends and I realized what was happening, we saw the bus's taillights disappear into the blowing snow and fog. And we looked at each other in disbelief, wondering <laughs> what in the world had just happened. Apparently, a crucial part of the dr bus driver's instructions got lost in translation. And we stood there in the darkness, in the fog, and the wind, and the snow, with no protection against any of it, except for this light fleece pullovers we were wearing when we left Wankayo. So there we were, three of us, John, Rambo, and me, stunned, stranded, in the dark, in the Andes, in a blizzard at 16,000 feet. What are you going to do? Well, someone said, I guess we'd better start walking. So in addition to the wind beating against us, this bone-chilling cold and blowing snow, our hands and our feet were quickly becoming numb. And we could feel our lungs burn as we struggled at that altitude for oxygen. And I'm not speaking for my companions, but I don't mind telling you that I became just a bit terrified. All I could think about was the airplane that crashed high in the Andes a few years back and what the survivors had to do to stay alive. Yikes. Sweet Jesus, a little help right now from you would be a good thing. So it was my prayer. And it was only a few minutes into our walk to who knows where when we heard this faint voice cutting through the wind. Jimmy! Jimmy! It was a nickname someone had given me somewhere along the way. Jimmy! Follow the sound of my voice! Follow the sound of my voice! Oh, music to our ears. So as we made our way toward the voice, I could tell that it belonged to my friend Rob. When we finally reached the bus, there he was, hanging outside the door with his hand reached out and telling us to grab it. 
And so one at a time, he reached down and he pulled us each into the bus. Rob had convinced the bus driver to at least slow down to a crawl in hopes that we'd eventually catch up to it. And his voice to listen to and his hand to hold, well, let's just say we were deeply grateful. So I know my left behind in a blizzard story doesn't come close to what the disciples were going through in the passage we just read. I mean, after all, the scripture says they were tormented and tortured by the howling wind and heavy squalls on that boat for about six hours before Jesus showed up walking on the water. Six hours. Nevertheless, a taste of the battering and confusion and, yes, fear they felt was very real. And you know what? It's actually, it's real for you, too. There are no strangers to storms. To be human is to be caught in storms. Whether the storms are literal or spiritual or emotional, all of the above, every single one of you has your own stories to tell. And when you find yourself in the middle of a storm, battered and tormented by the elements, thrust into chaos, disoriented and confused, afraid of what's to come, no control over what will happen next, you hope that someone, anyone, beside yourself is paying attention. You hope that God notices what's going on in all of this and that somehow, some way, God will meet you in the middle of it and the sooner, the better. You desperately want a voice to listen to and a hand to hold. Maybe it's because storms come with the territory of being human that the Bible is really fond of storm stories. In fact, the scripture starts with a storm. Remember the darkness covering the face of the deep, the wind of God sweeping over the waters in Genesis 1? Remember Jonah running away from God's voice and spending three days and three nights in the belly of a big old fish? Way too long if you ask me. But it was after his shipmates uh, after his shipmates throw him head over heels into the deep to squelch the squalls threatening to turn their entire ship into splinters. And then, of course, there are others, and there are these gospel stories of disciples who find themselves on several occasions battling the demons of the deep. And storm stories run throughout the Bible. But this particular storm story in Matthew 14 it's unique. And what sets it apart from others is Peter's unbelievable willingness to jump into the chaos, deeper into the storm, and come to Jesus while Jesus is still walking toward them through the dangerous undulation of the waves, which, by the way, threatened to kill them all. So listen again to what Peter does uh, as Eugene Peterson translates it uh, in the message. In the storm... Peter says, Master, if it's really you, call me to come to you on the water. Come ahead, Jesus responds. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at all the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and he started to sink. He cried out, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. And then he said, faint heart, what got into you? That right there, did you catch it? In the storm, in the chaos, in the torment, in the struggle, in the fear, a voice to listen to and a hand to hold. The one whose voice invites us to come toward him through the tor turmoil is the same one who reaches out his hand to grab us when we're sinking. Maybe that's why I find this passage encouraging. Fear is real, and we all have valid reasons to be afraid. We all know how fear can sink us, paralyze us, drown us. Fear will strap a saddle on you and ride you into the ground. Whatever fear got into Peter, truth is, it also gets into us, causing us to lose our nerve. But even in our fear, in whatever storm we're facing, and especially when we've lost our nerve to keep going, 
This storm story is a reminder that there is a voice to listen to and a hand to hold. It's God's promise of a power greater than the storms that batter us. The faith it takes to courageously walk toward Jesus through undulating currents, through instability, and through uncertainty caused by the storms will be met by God's hand which holds us when the chaos threatens to drown us. It's this divine promise that there's a wideness in God's love like the wideness of the sea which speaks peace to us in fear and grabs hold to set us free. We're buoyed by the presence of Jesus who shows up in the middle of it all and granted, often in ways we're unsure of what to make of it, but he shows up and speaks into the chaos. Take courage, take heart, I'm here. Don't be afraid. I wonder what storm story you're in the middle of right now. Are you in the middle of a storm of grief? Jesus comes walking through the fog of loss and pain. His is the voice to listen to, the hand to hold. But what makes you afraid in this pandemic? Jesus comes walking through the instability to meet you. His is the voice to listen to, his the hand to hold. The storms encountered by the church regarding the future of this congregation. Jesus traverses toward us through the disorientation to reorient us toward him. His is the voice to listen to. His the hand to hold. In the questions and doubt and confusion and chaos, whether they be individual or communal and collective, Jesus comes walking on the waves to hold out his hand to you and bids you follow the sound of his voice. His is the voice to listen to, the hand to hold. There is a faith in loving fiercely the one who is rightfully yours, especially if you have waited years, and especially if part of you never believed you could deserve this loved and beckoning hand held out to you this way, writes the poet David White. So I'm thinking of faith now and the testaments of loneliness and what we feel are worthy of this world. Years ago in the Hebrides, I remember an old man who walked every morning on the gray stones to the shore of baying seals, who would press his hat to his chest in the blustering salt wind and say his prayer to the turbulent Jesus hidden in the water. And I think of the story of the storm and everyone waking and seeing the distant yet familiar figure far across the water calling to them and how we are all preparing for that abrupt waking and that calling and that moment we have to say yes except it will not come so grandly, so biblically, but more subtly and intimately in the face of the one you know you have to love. So that when we finally step out of, the, of this boat toward them, we find everything holds us and everything confirms our courage. And if you wanted to drown, you could, but you don't because finally, after all this struggle and all these years, you don't want to anymore. You simply had enough of drowning. And you want to live and you want to love and you will walk across any territory and any darkness, however fluid and however dangerous, to take the one hand you know belongs in yours. So as we close out this week's service, I want to invite you to imagine yourself in the boat with these disciples. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? What do you feel? How are you responding? And so I've invited our friend Zach Blunt to help us do just that. 
So I'm going to turn it over to Zach and let him lead us as we close. So, uh, yeah, Peter and, uh, you know, the story about walking on water is what this is all about. And um, this is something, a uh, part of the scripture that's like real cliche, right? Uh, oh, ye of little faith. Uh, but it's something that's really important to me, being this unapologetically optimistic person um, who believes that um, Hope is rooted in faith, and faith is rooted in belief, and so as long as we're believing in something, um, we it, it's the way to keep us afloat, if you will, right? And um, yeah, that, that that's the kind of thing that gets us through, and, and we stay lifted, and, and we don't drown, we don't fall by the wayside, we, we rise above the occasion. The scripture that we're talking about with walking on water has so many different things you can connect with. You can talk about faith. You can talk about being in the midst of a storm. You can talk in a, talk about the lack of faith. You can talk about trusting in, 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 in people or, or God or, or Jesus, right? Uh, and I think contextualizing it in all of those different ways makes it really useful um, for, for almost everybody. Paint a picture of your imagination plodding onto the sea and the sun somewhere above the clouds where you cannot see and the wind whipping like a work in progress. Now process this through your senses. The nose, the mouth, the ears, the skin. You are within the storm. Tragedy does not exist in a silo. Suffering soaks us all, but don't dwell on the drenching in the midst of the drowning. We see the magnitude of God's ability to create and forget that we are the creation. O oh, ye of little faith, his hands have always been an invitation to rise to the surface in the surging of a storm, to walk atop of water, to make a sea calm, to see a perspective when people said impossible. You are what is possible when you refuse to let go of a hand or a hope or a heart in the middle of a storm. As we say at the end of each service, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. And together, we can do all things through Jesus Christ, who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It means a lot that you're here with us. We pray that this has been a meaningful and inspiring experience for you. Let us know how we can connect with you further, or if you'd like information about being involved at Park, send us an email at info at parkavchurch.org. The work of Park Avenue Church is sustained by generous people who include Park in their financial giving. You can give safely and securely by following this link. Thank you, and God bless. Get out of here. We're here with our leaders.